We welcome McKenna Faith to the stage of the Phoenix Theater. McKenna Faith is a singer-songwriter originally from Ukiah, California. She was at one point the number one selling independent female country artist on iTunes and has broken into the Billboard Country Top 100 chart. She has been playing music for years and recently released a new EP called Heart Stealer. Tonight, we'll get to know her personally and later, she'll play a collection of music. Please welcome to the program, McKenna Faith. Thank you. So I want to talk about Heart Stealer tonight, um, uh, but before we get to that, I'm curious, how many albums have you put out other than Heart Stealer? She's, I think, a four. Four. Yeah, because we like tracks, Let's Get Lost, Seal It With A Kiss, and then Heart, start Heart Stealer. Is there anything on your past releases, just in terms of like subject matter or just like emotional stuff put in that stands out to you? Songs that you still like think about and you're like, ah, oh, you know what, that one like still really hits me. Or, like, that happened because of this series of events, you know? Those are the interesting things, especially for, like, fans of your music. Yeah. Because sometimes, like, lyrics can be very simple, Mm -hmm. but they can have this, like, profound story behind them or this profound um, (laughs) experience that goes into them. You know, sometimes a song that can seem happy actually came from a very tragic moment that happened. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. So does anything on the the past uh, discography jump out to you as interesting? I mean, I know there are things that are significant, like Something Something, crack the hundred uh top 100 of the country yeah. chart right yeah that was my first radio single so we did we did it big we went on a radio tour and went all over the country and it was a lot of flying a lot of sitting in the car lyrical content on that song kind of simple though yeah uh, if you yep. want it if you really want it you gotta work it <laughs> yeah work for it yep you gotta i like work. that uh that line lyrics i got that from the queens of country.net review oh, and nice. here's what they had to say they said Here's what she's saying. Uh-huh. She's saying if the man wants her, he's going to have to make her want to stay because she's not easy to win over. And that's the truth. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the truth. You got to work for it. Yeah. <laughs> deep. That's deep. Is that like put a ring on? Every girl can relate to that, you know? Yeah. You better work for it. You better buy me dinner and a drink. Uh, Let's Get Lost was a 2014 album. Yeah. You know, you Don't Call Me Baby. Don't Call Me Baby that's anymore. That's simple because it's like yeah. you basically the guy was calling you baby. Yeah. But and he that, fucked up. Oh, he did. Yeah. And now he's out here. Now, was that written about a specific guy? <laughs> it actually was. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to say who. He yeah, knows. we don't need to say no, who. He knows kidding. who he is. <laughs> and scale of one to ten, how bad did this guy mess up? Uh, pfft. He messed up pretty bad. Yeah, it was it was time to go. Don't it was call time me to baby. go. Don't call me baby. I'm changing the locks on my door. Yeah. No. Um. I was I like this is I was like living at home, right and here. I was like living at home at yeah. the time. So it's kind of funny to listen back because I was like, it was like the things that go on in like a 15, 16 year old like mind. Now, now till death do you part? Oh yeah. Is that is that McKenna Faye thinking about killing someone? A little bit, you know. Yeah. You know when you're just like. <sighs> You're so irritated at someone. Like the sound of them breathing, like you're just you like, see, can you, you see can you, red. You, yeah, so you, like, can you get people. away from me? Like, so it's just kind of a quirky song, like talking about how, like, love, you love and hate, you know, like sometimes you want to run your horse over a person, but you still love them. I love the that. The you day. are an authentic country girl. Yeah. You don't want to run your car over a person. No, I want to run my horse. Run your fucking horse yeah. over a person. Mm. Yeah. Excuse my or language. Like, I think there's like one line there's like, I want to drown you in flowers, strangle you with love. It's just like a quirky, like tongue in cheek song, but let's leave the old album fan for a second. Let's go to the new one because that's kind of like what's on your mind now. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's all we'll, we'll yeah. play that. We'll play that fun game. We just played with that album. Okay. With the new album. <laughs> that's better. The new album is called heart Stealer. It came out earlier this year. It's by McKenna faith. Poison is the first track on the oh, new yes. album. What's poison McKenna. What's the song all about? <sighs> it's a sassy song. Yeah. It's like you better like, you're out with your man and this girl is like trying to trying to talk to your man you better back off because you know that's basically what the song is like don't touch my man so you're don't even look at him exactly you can look but don't touch yeah you know because sometimes they want to touch yeah and you'd be like at the end of the day i mean you, you can touch but that's all yeah it's, he's okay, coming so on with me okay so you can touch <laughs> maybe yeah. just like like this though like yeah. i see <laughs> nothing too groping a hug but <laughs> only a second hug not, look not let's just go <laughs> well you have bent a lot in the last 30 <laughs> seconds <laughs> <laughs> listen to me i'm just kidding <laughs> coffee in the morning is the second track on heart stealer yes 
I am a bit of a caffeine addict. So. This is a song that. But it's not about coffee. Describes how much you love coffee. You know? Oh, it's not. Well, it's. I oh. mean, it's about the comfort, like being in a routine, waking yeah, up every yeah. morning, drinking coffee, and it's about like being with that person that's just like comfortable. It seems like this album maybe celebrates a lot of bad behavior. It bad does. Behavior. Yeah, bad yeah. behavior. A lot of bad. A behavior. little bit. A little bit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So we got to keep it a little country. Because the you know? last, the last song is one more time. One more yes. time, and I, it, and it seems to me, as someone who spent some time with that song, it seems like, and you can correct me because mm-hmm. you wrote the song. Uh, is this a song about uh, doing something with someone that you've done stuff with <laughs> before, that you know you probably shouldn't do more stuff with, but you're going to one more time? You know, you pretty much nailed, uh-huh. <laughs> nailed, <laughs> nailed it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's like about you know. I feel like everybody's been there. You know, yeah. you you break up with someone, but then you're like, you know see him out and you're like oh hey yeah and you think <laughs> i you know think what just happened one more there time. just yeah. one more time yeah but then you, but you know you shouldn't but then you just it but happens. you do but you do but and just one more time that's just all. one more time <laughs> that's and it's, all. Re- it's relatable yeah because everybody has that experience yeah i think yeah. everybody yeah. yeah these guys at the table i think so <laughs> <laughs> i don't know no i'm just kidding yeah yeah yeah. Is it now? Is any of this based on your own bad behavior? Or is it all <laughs> bad behavior that you observe? <laughs> These other questions. People? I'm on the hot seat. I know. I know. Well, you're a good dodger, though. I'll give you that. Uh, you're a very, very good dodger. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So that hamburger today was pretty great. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just kidding. No, um, hamburgers are fun. <laughs> we all like hamburgers, but it's like, who is McKenna Faith? What does McKenna Faith <laughs> like on her burger? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> What does she like on her burger? Oh. Do you want to go light? We can go light. Do you have any pets? <laughs> <laughs> do you have any pets, McKenna Faith? I do. I do. What are your pets' names? Kippy and Petunia. Uh, what kind of animals are these pets? <laughs> They're dogs. Okay. Do these dogs have personalities? They do. And Petunia is a brat. Let's talk for like five minutes about Petunia. Okay. Petunia is... If Petunia was a person, describe this person. She would have like a pig nose. Yeah. Because she's a little pig. Yeah. And she... Greedy is, is Petunia. Is huge. Okay. She is... Half boxer, half American Stafford sire. Yeah. No, half boxer, half American bulldog. Is this, and a, is this a greedy dog? She's no, she's just like too friendly, just oh. like all up in your business all the time. Big hugger, if she was yes, a person. Then. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Needy. Uh, the dog Petunia. Uh, if you had to pick like a celebrity that they remind you of the most, who who would you choose? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and you can think about that while you tell us about the other dog. Who's the other dog? Kippy. What's Kippy all about? What's Kippy's story? Kippy. Uh, we adopted her from yeah. the Chico Pound, went up when she was two years old, or no, she was one. Saved this dog. life. A, I did, we did. She'd you been did? transferred from like three other pounds, yeah. and she was one, and she was like a little brindle, squirrely little thing, and I remember we took her out into the field, this like big pin that they like were like, you need to meet the dog, and she ran from across the field full speed and jumped into like her caretaker's arms or whatever. She was nuts. And she yeah. chewed, and we brought her home, and she chewed up my beanie, my headphones, shoes. She was such a brat. I was like, yeah. Does she remind you of yourself, this dog? She does. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like your relationship with Pippi? Kippy. Kippy. Kippy with the K. Is similar to maybe relationships you've had with people. Where it's like, maybe Kippy's got to go. Maybe it's time for Kippy to go. But I just can't. I just can't. No, Kippy's a heart stealer. No, yeah, Kippy's a heart stealer. This is the problem with your heart being available to be stolen (laughs) is your stuff gets destroyed. That's true. See, there's a lot more here in these lyrics than we're giving you credit for. Yeah, Yeah. wow. The things we do to ourselves, you know. Interviews are like. If I get nervous for anything, I don't get nervous when I get on stage. Like, I mean, I get like butterflies and excited, but like when I do an interview, I get so nervous. And like, it's listening back to my interviews, I'm always like, I need to do so much better. Dodge, dodge, dodge. I just wish I was better at telling stories. Look, I think that you're fine at telling stories. I just think that you are incredibly smart about (laughs) how much you give off because the the in fact i think any musician's job really or any person who is notable enough to do an interview their job is to try to give as little as possible (laughs) because you don't want people to uh you know use anything against you it's very smart to be very surface level however it's my job to try to get more out of you so it's like digging you know (laughs) we dig in uh boy do we dig in hey, do you want to talk about something serious for a minute yeah I'm sure. we could we could do that if you want to yeah, and then we good. can go back to wacky song stuff <laughs> 
Tom Gaffey called me on the phone earlier today. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the first time we've had a country artist on the show. Yeah. And he said, do we talk about what happened in Las Vegas? Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, we'll see where it goes. Doesn't feel completely uh, appropriate given the, you know, right. how your vibe and all that. But when you were talking about like the community and, and, and country and all that, it, it seems to me it's like must be particularly heartbreaking to you, not only because it's the music you play, but also because you know the people that go to these shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you and, know, yeah. Th- th- to that point, um, you said the same thing that I heard in this one interview. Th- this uh, one w- w- a lady was saying, my God, this was family. When you go to a country show, you're, you, everybody becomes family as soon as, as soon as you get there. It's everybody saying hello and slapping each other on the back and sharing food and being friends and like seeing your kids and all that. So I think this has got to have been a huge hit on the family. And so obviously we're talking about the, the shooting that happened yesterday in Las Vegas. I don't know if I contextualize that enough. This will come out way in the future. There was a, a giant shooting at a country music festival. Yeah. I feel like that is part of what draws people to go to a country show to to enjoy this sort of music yeah i think it's easy to um default to thinking the world is so negative when there's um, often divided politics or if there's natural disasters or there's shootings that we don't understand um, but i think it's a re-evaluation for everyone to think about why are we attracted to country music in the first place family values that bring community together that provide hope and resolve for a bigger picture that we don't understand. And I think what McKenna's doing and what the country music scene's doing in general is just reminding people to stay aligned with moral values of integrity and that which will bring peace and bring people together. Because in all the confusing times of wondering why is the world so fill in the blank, it's a reevaluation to say, I'm gonna commit to integrity. I'm gonna choose to be part of the solution Despite whatever the world out there is going on, I'm going to be part of the solution with just being of moral integrity. And McKenna's music, what McKenna's mission and values are, are completely aligned with providing a solution, with bringing people through a place where they could come to resolve and recontextualize peace in their heart and community. Yeah, I mean, I would say uh, at their best, uh, faith family values, uh, a, a, a firm sort of set of beliefs system. I mean, these are grounding rods that can, even if there's a crazy amount of movement in the world, winds of change are blowing like crazy. You have no idea what tomorrow's going to bring. I think what attracts people to those things is there's a sense of stability uh, in a changing world. And I think that country music represents those grounding rods for a lot of people amongst the audiences and amongst the performers there's a camaraderie yeah. in country music that is part of what i think the attraction in rock and roll was in the 60s and 70s you know brad paisley and keith urban and all those guys they're all buds like we are attracted to seeing people having fun on stage and it's country music is reviving that camaraderie and that friendship that um that we have all longed for people like feeling a, a part of something like you can look beyond genres at all types of festivals and people go there let's say they live in their little hometown and they don't feel like santa rosa you don't see a lot of cowboy hats and boots i mean sometimes you Anymore. do but yeah i mean so those people feel like they can be themselves when they go to a country festival and see everyone else wearing a cowboy hat and boots too. And the same with punk, you know, when they're in Santa Rosa or Petaluma, Sonoma County, and they've got their, or wherever, and they've got their chains and studs and stuff. Yeah, they've got people staring at them. But when they go to a festival, they fit right in with everyone. You know, it's a brotherhood. And I I think country music survives too because it bridges the sacred and the secular. So it's like music that's purely sacred is in a category. Music that's purely secular, talking about things uh, about everyday life, is another category. But country is unique because it provides a platform to bridge that which is sacred to family values and uh, moral ethics with that which is secular to everyday life. And so it provides a platform for everyone to relate to, something they could raise their family on, something that endures for decades. 
And you've, you've used the term family values a couple times, and I appreciate that because it is at the core, I think, of a lot of country folks. Um, why do you feel like that is an important part for people? Um, I think that that's a, that's a loaded term. I think some people would hear the term family values and, you know, especially like the younger generation who's kind of been maybe turned off to religion or, or you know, has seen maybe certain politics in such a way and they associate a term family values with something that's completely different. I'm just curious, like, what is family values to you and why are they, why are they important for that sense of uh, sustaining that you just described in country music? Well, in broad terms, if we were to look at the extreme opposites, if one did not have family, if one were alone, if one didn't have anyone to rely or depend on, it can get pretty depressing. It can get pretty depressing to feel you have no one to connect with. And the other extreme, if you have the most loving, supportive network, a family of friends that nourish you and encourage you and have your back, no matter what, filled with unconditional love, that gives you inspiration. That gives you infinite motivation. and Confidence. Confidence, everything, fill in the blank. Yeah. And country music is, is deeply rooted in that. Yeah, and besides the sacred and secular, if you look at uh, some of the great country artists, uh, uh, Hank Williams and Johnny Cash and uh, uh, Buck Owens and... Uh, you know, the, other, the part there that makes it so doable for the regular human being is that God loves a sinner, and, and uh, country is constantly reminding us of that. <laughs> and then you get redemption. Yeah. Yeah. You get, like, yeah. no matter how bad you mess up, you get, you get redemption forgiveness. It's a full circle to, <laughs> to um, living a life of community and family. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, McKenna Faith, do you feel that there's anything we've left out in this wide ranging and like exploratory <laughs> conversation? Is there anything else you want the people to know about you? Because like you said, you've never I wish a, that like yeah. you guys could come on the road with me or just like hang out with me for a day, go out to a concert. You, you guys meaning the fans? Yeah, like I wish or like even you guys. Let's the come day in the let's life. hang out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I wish we could, like, you know, I was in San Francisco last weekend on Hate Street walking around. Yeah, yeah. I was in Dolores Park. You just like, want to hang out with everyone. I just want to hang out with everyone. I love everyone. Yeah. That's your position is you yeah. love everyone. Yeah, I love, I love hanging out. It's fun. So I wish that's, I don't know how I would I be love like, that. I think know? that's the greatest final word. In my kind of face, do you have any final words? Well, basically, I just want to hang out with everyone and I love everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, if you, get okay. one, if you get one message across in an interview, I feel like that's the one. You Let's want everyone to feel loved. <laughs> you want everyone to feel like you're accessible to hang out yes. with. Yes. Yeah. And I, really I think though. that of all the things we've done here tonight, I think that we have channeled that vibe. Let's hang out. If, if you, let's let's hang out. I love everyone. I love the everyone. The McKenna <laughs> Faith mantra. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us tonight after a hundred episodes. You are our first honest to goodness country act on the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's been fun to hang out with you. So we hope the upward trajectory continues and yes. we wish you guys the best of luck as you continue on the path. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. And to everyone else, stick around because in just a moment it is Country Western Night here at the Phoenix Theater Ooh. in historic downtown Yeehaw. Petaluma. Yeah. The music <laughs> of McKenna Faith is next. And you're Thanks. gonna like it. Thanks again, everybody. Rock and roll. Thank, you. Thank you. And country music. <laughs>
Never gonna get away